Hi folks, this is the third part of Variational Inference, session 10. Um, we're going to talk about Variational Bayes Expectation Maximization now. And this is the idea of applying ma uh, Expectation Maximization to the Variational Inference setup. So if you remember, um, consider the, the following setup, okay? For instance, assume that you start with some X points and that you're interested to, to find them and you will model these, these X's with some global parameters that model um, the, the information from the X and some latent variables that correspond to, to this X. So this setup can be uh, widely applied. For instance, imagine that you have some data that comes from stratified sectors for instance, um, data that comes from a particular group of, of persons or, 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 or uh, schools or group of individuals. So you have some clusters that identify the X's, for instance. Or let's say like you have some uh, notion of clusters or some latent variables that define these X's as a group. And then you have a, a set of variables that define the behavior of all of them, okay? Now the question is how do you do to infer this set of parameters given that you don't know either the parameters or to which group they, they belong to? So if you remember we talked this about this before, the expectation maximization algorithm, in which in the expectation step you infer some posterior over, over the parameters, and sorry, over the, the latent variables, and then you just use some guess or, or some estimate or of the parameters to obtain your, your CIs. And then in the maximization part, you do the estimation of these parameters through a point estimate by doing the maximization of this uh, likelihood, right? Uh, the variational base extend this idea. And what we do is that we assume that our posterior is going to be uh, defined as um, uh, as a factorized family of, of functions, right? So we have this uh, Q theta and this multiplication of Q CIs. So basically we just have this mean field of the CIs times the, the family of the Q theta that we have here. And what, what we're going to do is something akin to the expectation maximization one. So in our expectation step, we're going to update this posterior, the CIs given the data, and on the maximization step, we're going to update the Q thetas given the data. So we are still uh, doing some expectation over the, uh, over the variables, and then doing some optimization with respect of the parameters. So one example that I have here for you uh, is the variational base expectation maximization for a mixture of Gaussians. So as you recall, this mixture is uh, nothing else but a multiplication of normals uh, using some weight. And then we multiply these for the k number of clusters and for every data point that we have. And uh, for this particular case, our prior is a Dirichlet for the different uh, clusters for the categories. So we have a, a dish layer over pi, and then we have k normals. So we will have k uh, normals for the means and k uh, wish hearts for the um, precision uh, matrix that we have in this case. And our posterior is as defined as, as uh, I just told you before. And then we will just select families that correspond to the conjugates of these priors. So such a way that we can just simply uh, find them without much uh, much problem, right? Since we have this um, uh, easy way of finding the 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 value for for the Qs, since we can define them, right? Now, if you remember from the previous part, we define how the mean field works, and what we came up with is that at the end of the mean field, we just use um, the expectation of the likelihood with respect of all the other parameters, right? So if we apply that, for example, for QC, we will compute the expectation with respect of all the Q thetas. And for Q theta, uh, we, will do, uh, we will do the same, right? Um, in this case, 
uh, if we just expand this uh, logarithm of my joint over here, that is um, the, the likelihood times the prior, and we just group those parameters that correspond to, to, to my C's, uh, we just end up with this particular part over here, the summation, that is the, this over here, right? The summation of the I's and the, and the clusters for the um, indicator function here of the CI, the latent variable that corresponds to the cluster, times the logarithm of this uh, rho I K plus some constant terms of all the other parameters that we don't care. And when we put that, the rho I K is um, the expectation with respect of Q of the log of, PK, of pi K plus the logarithm of the precision matrix, some constant term here, log of uh, two pi, plus the uh, expect expected value with respect of Q of theta of my term data, right? Uh, that is just the difference between the X size and the, and the mu's. And in here we have, for instance, uh, we just need to solve for each of these, right? So what is, um, this expectation, right? This expectation is nothing else but um, the expectation over a Dirichlet, since my Q pi is, uh, is also a, a Dirichlet, and we end up with a D gamma over here. Same thing happens for the, um, uh, for the family of the mu K and the precision K, lambda K over here, since they end up as the, the mean and the, and the wish heart, sorry, the, the normal and the wish heart. Okay, and they end up also with the shape of a D gamma over here. And our data term is uh, in a similar fashion. So when we plug these back into our um, uh, likelihood with respect of Q, uh, we find the risk, right? The risk of, of being uh, that the data I is uh, on assigned to cluster K and it is proportional to this expression over here, so we can just throw away those other constants. And we, we just re repeat the, the same steps and the expectation maximization uh, original algorithm, right? And now for the Q, we can just maximize um, this logarithm over here. Same as before, we just apply um, the, the logarithm to the definition of Q, right? And that is like just my, my theta term. And then we're just uh, worried about finding uh, what is the, the definition of this. And once we apply this uh, optimization to, to each of those parameters, we start finding, for instance, that this uh, Q pi is also a Dirichlet distributed. So we can simply find those parameters as we did before. And uh, what is my last one? And we can do the same for the mu, uh, for the normal, right? We apply uh, these and we will find out that the Q mu K and lambda K are normally distributed. So you can just simply go and take those parameters from the original one. And as you see here, and remember like this is really a um, matter of practice because once you have the closed forms, you can simply go back and check how to do the, the attribution for each of those parameters. But to actually understand and try to solve these, you need to do it by hand and try to complete the, um, uh, the shapes and try to visualize them to be able to obtain these. Okay, So that is some exercise that you need to, to do. And similarly, you can find the, the posterior predictive and you will find out that uh, it, ends, it, is, it ends up as a um, summation of weighted normals. So we can express these as T students and use that to make the prediction just with, with one uh, data point, right? And we don't have to, to worry about uh, all, the other, all the other things. So this is uh, an, a, a really quick introduction to variational inference. It's a really, really powerful technique. There are limitations to it, but we have um, different, more advanced ways that sadly we won't cover on, on our limited time. But I encourage you to go and check, for instance, 
uh, research in this area if you want to work. Um, these days is really, really used, for instance, in gangs or, or some generative methods because the, the variational part is really helpful to model these distributions and, and push a prior into it. And it's simpler when you don't have these closed forms because we don't know the, the shape of the data, okay? So that was it for uh, variational inference. See you next time.